There's certain things that are difficult. Getting a parachain as well. It doesn't stop there. You have to build the runtime. You probably need to build it with substrate. It's not meant for everyone. But then you also need to think about, yes, yeah, sure, Polkadot provides like what we call shared security, but there's also, you need a chain that produces blocks, right? And that's the collators and how to incentivize collators and how do you talk to wallets and how do you talk to RPC endpoint, like RPC providers. I think this gets to the heart of why Tansy is being developed. Good luck, Tim. Wishes you good luck and Godspeed. Space Monkeys blasting off with Gorka Irotoki. He is researcher and developer at Tansy, project spinning out of Pure Stake, the folks that brought us Moonbeam. Gorka, welcome to the show. Great Thank to have you, so you here. Much. Thank you so much. So you uh, started in research. You did your PhD in, what was it, side attacks? Side channel attacks. Side channel attacks on cloud services. Yes. Can right. you give us the, yeah. the short on that? Yeah, sure. Um, so. This was my first touch with like anything crypto related or security related, right? Yeah. So it, so everything you use in the computer leaves traces, right? Like uh, if you type your password, obviously you can tell that it leaves traces like in the keyboard or, or whatnot, right? And in this case, what we were trying to do is find these kind of like channels that would give us traces of like security passwords, security keys, whatever whatever you, you can name through anything that happens in the computer. And in this case, it was like a specific memory that it's called cache, which is like a faster memory that ha that computers have. Sure. And basically, we were detecting that by using the same computer, which in the cloud happens a lot, right? So you rent a virtual machine, someone else rents another virtual machine, but and they are using the same kind of physical machine underneath, right? So um, we're seeing that, you know, if one virtual machine was doing something security related, it would leave traces in the physical machine that the other one was accessing, right? So okay, yeah, we were actually, yeah, we were actually able to get like a I think it was an RSA private key from one virtual machine to the other in AWS. I think that was quite massive. Uh, but yeah, that was that was fun. Fun times, for sure. And yeah. from there, you picked up an interest in cryptography? Yeah. Right? Yeah, I uh, became in love with it, yeah. You, okay. <laughs> Probably it was because I, I had a very good teacher, which was also my advisor. He taught like the essentials of it. He, he, I love the way how it combines like, you know, probability, math, all this kind of stuff. I love that. And then the fact of like adding the component of trying to break it, I think that that made it such that I became in love with it. What work were they getting you to do at Pure Stake then, when you first started over there? It was nothing uh, crypto related. Well, it was crypto related. Obviously, you're working in blockchain, right? So everything yeah, yeah. has some crypto component, right? Sure, so, sure. Um, but it wasn't. It was more um, a research kind of like role, I think. So um, there's some parts that need to be open in in, in Moonbeam per se, right? So because I was hired to work in Moonbeam. Yeah. And I think they hired me because they had my research background and I, they knew I could like, you know, open like ways that potentially like, you know, were not opened yet, right? So, mm. and this happened with um, certain aspects of, of the Polkadot ecosystem in general for Moonbeam, obviously like XCM or, or other things that we didn't know about at that time. But uh, yeah, we needed to like, again, open the path uh, to it, so yeah. Okay, so you were basically widening what was possible with Moonbeam? Yeah. And what do you think was the biggest success you had over at Moonbeam? I do appreciate a lot how um, XCM has been designed and how XCM has been built and, and how secure it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's hard to understand. Like, you know, I can tell it, it takes like months to understand it. Like, I think mm. one of the biggest success that I had is uh, not only knowing myself how XCM works, but also teaching the rest of the team how XCM works and how. Um, so we ended up, like, in my opinion, building one of the best. XCM docs that we have in the ecosystem, uh, and that's probably because I started it. Uh, not not the docs itself, but I started like you know learning about it, and I guess I also knew how to communicate with the rest of the team to, so that they they were able to build those those docs and those those learning yeah, sessions. So right, that's, that's good. Yeah. Well, that kind of brings up an interesting point, and I think this gets to the heart of why Tansy is being developed, mm -hmm. and that's deploying on Polkadot is actually pretty difficult to do. You can't you know, take a, a weekend course or, or, or a two week course, let's say, and then deploy a product with any ease, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I agree with that. There's, there's certain things that are difficult. The first thing obviously is getting a parachain slot, right? So getting a parachain slot, it, it is, I mean, it takes money and it, it, it is difficult, right? Yeah. Uh, but when you think about it, that doesn't stop there. So you have to build the runtime and the, the runtime 
you probably need to build it with substrate, right? I love substrate. You know, I, I love uh, I love the way it works. I love the way it's, it's designed, but it's not for everyone. It's not meant for everyone. Like right, I, I right. think it's not something that everyone can use, right? It's not a framework that um, is meant for everyone. So uh, that's the second like kind of burden that you encounter. But then you also need to think about yes, yeah, sure, Polkadot provides like what we call shared security, but there's also um, you need a chain that produces blocks, right? And that's the collators and how to incentivize collators and how do you talk to wallets and how do you talk to RPC endpoint like RPC providers and all this stuff takes a massive amount of time. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah um, we can, I mean, I, I can speak for myself that you know I, I suffered that. Um, obviously now it's rewarding because we see Moomin, you know, I've seen Moomin live for two years already. Yeah. But I can tell that um, if someone wants to build uh, in Polkadot right now, it, you know, going through that, it's it's it might be quite a lot. Okay, yeah. so why don't you tell us a little bit about what the Tansy mission is? Okay, and what Polkadot could look like <laughs> after? Sure, after it's deployed. <laughs> sure, because of the reasons right, right that I just mentioned. Um, yeah, we felt there is a need of like you know speeding up or at least make it make it a little easier to to launch in Polkadot. Yeah, and obviously. Um, there's certain components that Polkadot already provides, right? So obviously, um, building a chain in, in other ecosystems might be even more difficult because you don't get the shared security that Polkadot offers. That means that you need to spin up your own validator set. Yep. That means that your security might not be high enough. Um, so, you know, all this kind of stuff. You need to even build bridges, right? So, like, um, bridges are a pain in the ass. So, bridges, like, if you don't have something like in Polkadot where we have like a shared security mechanism, it, it's hard, right? Because in order to talk from one chain to the other, you need to rely on the security of the other one. And that's mm -hmm. that might not be sufficient. So mm. um, all this kind of stuff uh, made us think that Polkadot obviously was the best place to, to launch something in which we could speed up uh, the process of, of building uh, what we like to call app chains, right? I mean, parachains are app chains in general. They're just chains that have some specific uh, functionality in mind. Moomin with ABM, you know, Manta with privacy, or you know, every every single chain has is very good at something very specific, right? Yeah, right. And that's why we thought like if we wanted to launch something that would speed up the process of launching app chains, it had to be poked out because of the shared security and you know all the breaching and XM stuff that it provides. Sure. But it is true that there's other aspects that we need to fix, right? So or um, that we need to provide or help with. Um, the first one is the the, col the collector stuff, right? So um, as I said. You build the parachain, yes, you get shared security of the relay, but you still need some nodes that produce blocks, right? So, and those are the collators. Um, and that might be hard for some chains to, to, to come up with an incentivation mechanism, to come up with, you know, um, a sufficiently decentralized set of collators that, that can produce blocks. Uh, and that's where T Tansy comes in, right? So, um, what we decided that Tansy would help with is um, basically providing what we call collation as a service or block production as a service. Yeah, yeah. So uh, in that sense, you as a developer of, a, of an app chain, you only have to um, focus on what you want your chain to do, like the runtime itself, like the state transition function. Mm -hmm. So what do you want it to do? That's it, right? So the rest, uh, leave it for Tansy, because Tansy will provide the infrastructure, in this case, in the form of nodes that produce blocks, uh, that will produce blocks according to your chain rules. Okay, and we'll push it to the to the relay chain. Tansy also offers data retrievability. What uh, what we mean by this is basically incentivization of nodes that are um, in charge of keeping this, the history of of a chain, of our app chain in this case. And then additionally, what we also uh, ambition is um, offering like templates that. Um, people can use directly instead of just building their own runtime uh, with Substrate uh, that might take a while, right? So we offer them like a specific set of defined templates already that they can take, customize and push uh, to pro push to production, right? Okay, understood. So you guys will be your own parachain mm -hmm. and you're going to have your own token. It's not defined yes. yet, right? But you'll yes. have your own token and you're providing collator services for other app chains. Yes. Now these other app chains are they going to be parachains as well? Or um, are they running off of Tansy? That's a good question. And that's the first decision we had to make when, when we built Tansy. So our decision was, OK, shall we make it such that Tansy is the parent and the yeah. app chains are, are the childs, right? Yes, and yeah. basically, they all go through Tansy. Right. Or shall we make it as a sibling, in a sibling relationship, right? Whether you know the rest of the app chains are para threats or parachains as mm -hmm, well, mm -hmm. and they act as a sibling, as siblings to, to Tansy. And we said the second one. And the reason for this is that um, if we made it such that Tansy was the parent and AppChains were the child, yeah, um, they yeah. would all 
be using the execution core that uh, Tansy has. Uh, and by execution core, I mean the obviously the block space that Tansy has assigned in the relay chain. And that would be potentially, um, I mean, the, the throughput would be potentially um, reduced, right? Because of that. So we decided to go the route of, you know, we let each of the app chains um, have their own execution core in the form of block space yeah. in the relay. And then we coordinate such that Tansy can still provide collection services to them, even if they are sibling parachains or para threads. I mean, that will depend on them. Yes. Okay. So, could you elaborate a little bit more then on the on the business case here? How would you charge another parachain for your collation services, for sure. example? And is that the main source of revenue for yes. the business? Yes. Okay. Sure. Okay. So the way I mean, it's not set in stone, obviously yet. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the way we imagine is, first of all, like you know, um, let's. I, I think the parathread model is, is actually easier to pick to understand because the parathread model you don't need to acquire a slot in the in the relay chain um, as parachains do right now, where they have to like you know win a complicated auction or something like this. Mm -hmm. Parathreads can just rent block space as they go, right? So they can just um, decide whenever they want to push a block, they can just buy that slot in the relay and then push the block and then forget about it, right? That's the model we see app chains being, right? So um, you might imagine an app chain that um, has not enough traction yet and it doesn't have enough money to, to become a parachain, then become a parathread, right? Push your runtime there and subscribe in Tansy for collation services offered by Tansy, right? So in this case, they probably will need to do something with the token, whether it's locking it, burning the Tansy token, whatever, whatever we decide them, the, um, there to do, right? Um, but they will need to pay in some sort, right? Um, for for intensity tokens, right? For for the collation services, right? Mm -hmm. And then once the collectors are proving that they're producing blocks um, for that uh, app chain in general, um, we are gonna be able to reward them in, in the Tansy token as well through inflation or, or whatever economic incentive we decide, right? But that's kind of the idea, the mental the mental model that we have. Okay, and then is your team helping app chains launch as well? Yes, we are envisioning like you know um, helping chains like build their own templates as 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 they need them. So obviously we will need uh, we envision also like teams will um, mostly pick like one of the predefined templates because like the predefined templates are very are very generic in the sense that we have one EVM template, for instance. Yeah. M very likely, a lot of projects will use that EVM template, right? Because they will have, they will just want an EVM where they can deploy this smart, their smart contract and they can customize certain things about the fees, but that's it, right? So, mm. yes, we ambition, like, you know, the creation of, of these kind of templates that um, will help them with the minor configurations, right? Launch without, like, having to go through the, the pain of, like, learning Substrate and um, learning how to, how to build with Substrate, for sure. I've heard that you have like 30 peop, uh, projects lined up to launch yeah. AppChain, is that true? Yes, we have 30 projects that shown, have, shown, have shown interest. In, have shown interest. Yeah. Can you give one example? Remark, for instance. Remark, for instance. Yeah. Okay, so what does that look like? So Remark, Remark wants to launch an AppChain. Yeah. Okay, what does that process look like working with Tansy? Well, it depends on what they want to launch, right? But if, if they just need an EBM in which they deploy their smart contracts, they can pick the template. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a five minute process. They pick the template, right? Yeah, um, yeah. They configure certain things in the genesis like you know who is the if you have sudo key who's the sudo key if you have balances who has balance and what amount right that's the genesis yeah uh, they configure that uh they register uh, in the relay chain they register in Tansy. they pay for the collection services um obviously when you pay for the collection services it means um it, you get some kind of block credit right so you get a certain amount of blocks that can be produced right okay so it's not like indefinite like you know infinite so it's just you need to like refill that the tank um but yeah once you do that um your chain is live the collisions at some point the collectors at some point will pick your job mm -hmm. and will start collating for your for your app chain okay and with the uh, templates are there HRMP connections to other chains already and not not really. So no. the XCM stuff is there. So I, okay. I mean XCM is configured in, in, in the templates, right? So got it, um, got it. there's no pre-established HRMP connection yet. Uh, Wouldn't mainly, they need one with you? I mean, not yet. So we might envision in the future uh, certain ways to pay also in their own token certain like services. Ah, okay, yeah. For yeah. that, yes, we will need HRMP. And we can we have some ideas on how to like set up a HRMP connection with, with Tansy. Almost immediately, right? So because yeah. like one of the burdens I see also in, in, in today in the Polkadot ecosystem is that if you want to open an HRMP channel, it's kind of a tedious process, right? Yeah. You need to open it from one chain to the other, and the other one has to accept it. Then the other one has to propose the other action. Then you have to accept it again. Yeah. So it's it's a bit hard. Um, so if we ever need, which we will probably do, um, that HRMP connection between Tansy and, and app chains, 
um, we'll probably facilitate it with like you know predefined palettes that um, are able to propose the HRMP connection in, almost immediately without going through governance process or anything like that. Gotcha. Okay. So you have Remark launching. Any other that you could tell us about? Yeah, today? Uh, there's Koda lined up, Kawa as well. There's NFT Gen as well, and there's a few others uh, that have uh, shown interest as well. So yeah, um, obviously um, we'll soon launch our testnet. So that will be kind of a good uh, testing framework in which they can deploy and say whether they're satisfied with the services or not. It's just adding a bunch of palettes that you feel that they are going to do what, whatever you want, right? So, but the collision is the, the, the thing that wires, right? Your parachain with the relay chain, right? And that's, right. that's something that is hard to, to do, right? So I think um, by leveraging our knowledge on, on how that, that process works, I think, I think they're going to be quite satisfied with that. Once this becomes common practice, I mean, do you think uh, Derek Yu's prediction of getting code to blockchain in under an hour is reasonable? I think it is. Well, it will depend. Um, I mean, obviously, <laughs> within an hour, it might depend on certain aspects of the relay as well. So sure, it, that, sure. it doesn't solely depend on us because, like, yeah. you know, uh, even becoming a para threat, right? So uh, that might take two hours, depending on how much the session, <laughs> okay. the session okay. length is in the relay. But definitely, you can make it under like half a day, and that's 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 something that we'd love to. Like, right now, in our testnet, we can do it in in four hours, and even in less than four hours, which is Damn. something that it's it's, you know, compared to like months of uh, development process that uh, we suffered with parachains. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's a big improvement for sure. What's going to happen when projects come to you? I is there going to be any reason for projects to still deploy on Moonbeam? Or are you guys going to start pushing everybody over to being their own? <laughs> That's a good question. Well, it, I think it depends on the, on the needs of the project. So, okay. Um, what would the needs be to be in either of the two buckets? It's again the question of whether you want to become a smart contract or an app chain, right? And the, the question lies down to, um, do you need specifically to modify certain aspects of your, of your application? Uh, that you cannot do in a layer one like Moonbeam or Ethereum? If so, um, then you know, Tansy would be your ideal place, right? Because like, again, the chain is yours. You can customize the fees, you can customize what kind of gas token you use, you can customize whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have a need for that, uh, you're happy with how, what the L1 is offering you in terms of like, you know, um, gas model or, or, you know, even democracy model, etc. So then a Moonbeam and Pro or probably any other smart contract platform is, is good for you as well. Got it. Yeah. So. Tansy, when we first started hearing about it, this was, I don't know, maybe four or five months ago. Mm -hmm. This was when we were just approaching Polkadot V1. Yeah. And now we have Rob on stage talking about, well, you know, they're not really collators anymore. They're builders building <laughs> what work packets, which can contain work or jobs from, you know, multiple yeah. parachains. Uh, how does this change the architecture of Tansy? I don't think it does in in, in reality. So we okay. obviously we, we built with us with this model with this with this model change in mind. So it's okay. Not, I mean, yes, so we've been we've been following what Parity is doing uh, for a long time, and, and we know this these kind of things are going to change. And I, it's actually I think it's actually beneficial for Tansy because um, if you think about it, Tansy distinguishes very well um, like the chain from the block builder, right? So I yeah, think yeah. this this aligns very well with what Polkadot wants to do. And what to say about like you know the, the like you know even reducing block block times right so which is what what we're gonna try to do with Polka LP two right so that's also something that that we think is gonna benefit Tansy, and even going further than that like you know this agile core time that uh, Polka is promoting right now yeah. so if you think about it um once para threads are live right now if you stick with the model that we have right now you will have a model in which you rent your block space for two years what parachains do today. Or um, you will be able to become a para threat, which um, again you can buy the block space on a block by block basis. But there's nothing in between, right? Mm -hmm. With agile core time, I think it's 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 even better, right? Because you will have chains that can rent the the core for one month, let's say, right, and test whether uh, they have sufficient traction to like propose blocks every six seconds. If so, they can renew their release, right? So that's something that also for Tansy is good. Um, if not, they can become para threats and propose like every, I don't know, one minute or whatever they want, right? Sure, so I think sure. that's all this flexibility on, on, on the core time and on like block producing, uh, I think it's it's always beneficial for Tansy. Yeah, I wonder if Tansy will become, you know, one of the main builders in the, the ecosystem as far as building. We, we hope so, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's that's our goal goal definitely um, we want to we want to make Polkadot successful and that 
will only happen if we're able to attract like projects into the Polkadot ecosystem, right? And that's what Tans is, is planning to do, yes. I'm just trying to imagine Polkadot with like an extra 80 kind of lightweight blockchains, single single app blockchains yeah. all working together there. Yeah. We'll that, be, that's going to be nuts. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. And how do we help, I mean, once, once they're launched, how do we help them, you know, keep up with Substrate development, start connecting with each other? Uh, how, do, how do they do all that? Um, keep up with Substrate development. We will try to help. I mean, obviously, if if they used one of our templates, we're we're planning to maintain our templates. Like okay, okay. So that's we, we will help. So with they that. don't even have to think about it. No. If every time we have a new runtime release for our templates, they they just have to update it. That's it. Oh. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, obviously, um, how how do we help them like connect with each other? That's. Um, for me, that's that's why XCM is here, and that's why XCM is, is be, becoming so popular, right? So I think um, just by the fact that um, having an HMP connection with certain parachains will guarantee that you have connection with any of the rest, like in this case, BridgeHub or I mean, BridgeHub is a clear um, is a clear is a clear system chain that will give you connection with Ethereum, right? For instance, and yeah, so, right. So this this will for sure, like just by becoming a, a an app chain in Polkadot will guarantee that you have connection with the most known and most uh, successful chains in both in the Polkadot ecosystem and outside. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So when does this become a reality? Uh, <laughs> Testnet just launched a couple of days ago. Yes, it did. Yes. What's, what's the next step um, after that? So um, obviously, um, Testnet has the essentials, right? So all these kind of like security mechanisms that that we need for collectors to produce logs, yeah, yeah, uh, not to be attacked, etc. So all this kind of stuff is in the in the first uh, testnet. There, there's still a, a long road in um, until we hit, uh, you know, our potential Polkadot launch. Uh, but we're mm. envisioning it might happen like um, Q1, Q2 next year. Wow, that's quick. Yeah, um, going straight to Polkadot. Yes. Yeah. Uh, for now, I think that's that's the idea. We might change the, our vision, but yeah, for now, okay. I, think, I think it's the idea. Um, and yeah, we'll we'll see, but uh, hopefully we will reach it. Yes, obviously, um, this it, we're not alone here, so we want to launch uh, in Polkadot with Parathreads, and obviously uh, for uh, that we we need Parathreads to be live in Polkadot. Okay, so I see. We'll see whether we can launch with Parathreads or we have to release like a, a runtime version that only works with Parachains. Right. So we'll see. It'd be really hard to uh, launch and parachains are the only option, right? Because then, <laughs> I mean, you need to help these projects win a crowd loan or, yeah. or win an auction and all that. And that, I guess that doesn't really help the onboarding. Yes, definitely. Uh, there's some ideas in the plate also to help them, like, you know, um, incentivize like a potential crowd loan. Um, okay. Uh, but again, they're not set in stone and everything we can do to help them, obviously we will. Um, but obviously we cannot like, support like you know hundreds of, of container chains or app chains that we we'll deploy in, in polka right so we'll have to like you know um select very well which ones can be deployed by through through parachains and not yeah yeah uh, hmm. but yeah other than that i think we tested how how it works with parachains and it works fantastic yeah so it's a matter of you know once the parathreads are here we can adapt easily and if not we can try to launch with parachains with certain like you know plans to incentivize those or so we'll see fascinating all right, well, this is a really interesting development. I, I think it's interesting because we just had uh, a star, right? They just went to the L2 on Ethereum. And part of the reason why they did that is because the, the clients they were speaking to yep. kind of wanted these, you know, these first gen apps, basically. They wanted an easy deployment close to Ethereum. Yep. But here you guys are saying, no, we're actually going to make it easy for anybody to onboard into Polkadot. Yep. I do hope you guys are very successful Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. So. It's very nice talking to you, Gorka. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. It was very nice.